Welcome guys, here are we now on part 3 of 4 video series. I assembled the cabinet the night before and I attached the lower trunnions and I made my first mistake, wrong side butt joints but I managed to fix it anyway. I attached the trunnion item number 19 and 17 on the carriage housing both front and rear and I placed it on the lower trunnions that are attached on the cabinet panel. And this is how it looks on the side, I'll just repeat it. This is the bottom trunnion items 18 and 19 attached on the cabinet and this is item 19 attached to 17 and they are attached to the housing. Same thing goes with the front trunnions. And this one item 20 and 10 are the top piece that would secure the trunnions from moving side to side or up and down. Do not attach the piece just yet. Check again a hundred times the squareness of all the parts. The housing and the cabinet should be perpendicular. Front and back panel should be parallel. Use a long square to check those critical alignments. Test fit the trunnions if it's sliding smoothly. Now for the dust collection. I should have done cutting these parts along with the parts that I cut earlier in the video but I ran out of plywood. So include all these parts in your batch cutting and assemble the cabinet and the dust chute and the dust box all together to save time. And do you remember the triangle cutoffs from the carriage that I mentioned earlier in the video? I used it and made an improvised miter sled, something like that. I attached the triangle cutoffs on the crosscut sled and secure the part by a screw and tighten it a bit so that it won't fall off. Here's the assembled dust box. Please note this, that in the plans there is some kind of mismatch or missing dimensions. I think it happened when I converted the plans from CAD to PDF file, so please make a note on that. Then I painted the whole cabinet as planned and uh, decided upon by me from the start that my projects will be all painted. Now it's time to attach the circular saw to the carriage. But take note, if you're gonna build this project, when you reach this stage, make sure that all the parts have been cut already as you won't be able to cut anything in a couple of days, especially if you only got one circular saw. As you can see here, I just need to remove the blade guard so that the sawdust won't settle and clog up the bottom of the guard so not to cause harm to the motor. I'm gonna measure up where I'm gonna make the cuts, then I'm gonna remove the screws that holding up the carriage together and cut the individual parts according to the shape of the saw of the circular saw once i cut the individual parts i screw them again together to test fit if the circular saw is embedded perfectly in the carriage and once i'm happy with the fit i'll apply glue then clamp it down with some clamps and screws making sure to apply enough glue to make it solid and stable then i'm gonna check and make sure that the blade is parallel with the carriage this is critical so you want to take your time when attaching them i inserted some aluminum shims in the strategic points not shown here but i const constantly checking the parallelness but or squareness of the parts every time I drive any screw or shims making sure that they're not moving away or moving from side to side. Then I secure it with this flat aluminums and don't forget to make the rabbits on top of the carriage to make them flush, okay? This aluminum will serve as the bridge that will hold the carriage housing together which you'll see later in the video. I have here the parts for the riving knife mounting plate. 
I use plexiglass for this but you can use any materials that is stable. Here the plate should be aligned with this part of the blade. Part of the plate, I'll just glue them up with 5 minutes epoxy. I screw them on to the side of the saw aluminum guard. I'll drill the holes for the machine bolts and nuts where I think it would be secured and strong. I also drill hole and dive in insert nut on the back side of the plate so it won't be pulled out from the hole when tightening the bolts. I use allen screws for this but you can use other fasteners but I like allen bolts for convenience. I sketch the shape of the riving knife on the piece of cardboard then cut it to shape. I don't have any piece of metal plate here that I can use so I think it's much economical and easier if I send the pattern to a local metal workers. I made this channel to hold the riving knife securely and won't fall off and touch the blade in case I forget to tighten up the allen bolts. I secured the electrical cable by applying hot glue and fastened it up with aluminum flat plates. And also, I attached two layers of flat aluminum to serve as a spacer. This is the part that rubs and slides up and down inside the carriage housing. And it will make it slide smoother and will not stack up in the long run when dust gets trapped between the carriage and the housing. I also put a piece of aluminum angle underneath the circular saw, but you should check your circular saw if there is nothing in there that will be damaged if you do this. Then I sent this pattern to a local metal working shop near me. And this is how the carriage should fit exactly in the housing. When you drop it in the housing, not too loose nor too tight. It's just slowly sliding down precisely as intended. I applied some wax to seal off the sides of the housing. Then I wipe it and rub it thoroughly making sure that there are no leftover lumps of wax. Okay, but that's how tight or how it should fit when you drop the carriage into the housing like a piston fit. And I got my riving knife back. I asked the guys to use 3 mil steel plate, a little bit smaller than the curve line. My saw curve width is about 3 to 3.2 or 3.4 mil. These are the parts for the universal joint. I just cut the flat bar lengthwise in halves, drilled three holes and two holes are to be attached with the long nuts that's gonna be the yoke or the fork then rounded over this piece on one end. This assembly was not in the plans. One of the last minute decisions I made. So I just did this on the fly but it's pretty much easy. This is the nut that I filed in a shape of a square. But if you want to make it round, it would be even much better. Then I found insert pins. Then I would insert this pin and two shorter ones to be used as the cross pin of the universal joint. I would drive this wood until it's tight. Then I would just cut it off. So here I've inserted the long pins and adding smaller pins. And this will function as the cross pin and epoxy glued them in place and I'll dry fit these parts to show you how it would be. Then I'll attach them together with a bolt and nut that matches the holes. There are available universal joints that you can buy online if you want to. Just make sure that the size is similar to what I've made here. And this is how they look like when fully assembled. I fastened the universal joint assembly on both ends to the threaded rods that act as the input and output shaft. From this view, the input shaft on the right and output shaft on the left. The output shaft is connected to an arm at the end of that shaft. There is a long nut inside that block of wood that travels through the output shaft when the input shaft is rotated. I fix the worktop to the cabinet with these door hinges. Make sure that the blade is parallel with the crosscut sled slots. I mark up the location of the pivot points for the router and drill two holes. 
Of course, the pivot point should be parallel with the slots. Just like what I did previously, I'm using my sophisticated router jig. I'm using a bigger straight router bit here. I think it's about 8 or 10 mil. And I'm gonna make a half circle slot on both ends. The depth will depend on how thick is the material that you're gonna be using as the insert plate. I made mine 6 mil deep or 2 layers or three of 3 mil plexiglass. Then I'm gonna connect those half circle with a straight line. Then I repeat the whole process to cut through and make the opening. I traced, cut, and sanded this plexiglass that I will use as the insert plate. Then I'll drill 4 holes on the insert plate all the way through the table. Now I just need to do is raise up the blade and cut the initial slot then I will file it to make it a little bit wider. I'm using a forcer bit to open up a hole so I can stick my finger there to pull out the insert plate if I need to change the blade or change the insert with a zero clearance insert. Then I painted it green. And here's the lock nut underneath the table that I embedded in the wood and glued it up with an epoxy glue. 